All right, everybody, it's your boy, Skinny Blue Dude, and today we're gonna pick up a couple of the dudes and we're gonna do a couple of the things. So let's go. All right guys, so we got some Stiphodon rainbow gobies here. Never had gobies before, super cool. Uh, didn't actually think I'd be making this video, but Zach came along, nobody else did. We were supposed to bring a bunch of people, but, and now we are looking for our old manager. And how's it gonna go down? <laughs> what? I like that piece of driftwood. I think I have some of that in my tank. That'll look nice like this. With, I can see your pleco on top of that. Like, Scrolling uh, it, skinning it. <laughs> Like Pride Rock from Lion King. Stealing every ounce of wood off of them. <laughs> Alright guys, we couldn't find Graham, so we're just, I mean, who's Graham? We couldn't find our manager, I mean. So we're just gonna, we're gonna head home after we get some food. Or we'll go to another pet smart, who knows. You're very close right now. I need you to hold those fish for a second. I'll be right back. I can understand those people's fear of getting hit, you know? <laughs> Other minor things, you know? That is kind of nice. This, <laughs> this filter can fit so many cartridges. <laughs> you see, Zach, I told you we would need the cart. That, that is a lot more money than I thought I was going to spend. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, we're at our third, uh, our third PetSmart <laughs> tour. We might go to Bulk Barn after and see if they have any fish in there. Highly doubted, but we'll check it out. Hey guys, we're back from our PetSmart tour. <laughs> that face. So we've got our Stiphodon gobies and our rainbow gobies. I'm gonna call them Stiphodons because it sounds like a dinosaur. I look so much taller than you on camera. Lucky, <laughs> my hair's flat. <laughs> uh, we also got some cherry shrimp in here. Uh, we also some black cherry shrimp. So we're gonna somehow divide those in the bag and put them in the 10 gallon and then we'll do some cinematics later and I don't know We might do like a Nerf war or something later. We're both kind of weird, you know. <laughs> Hi guys, so I'm sorry about how this video is going so far. I don't remember what I said last not because I have amnesia which which we do, you know it, uh, it, it travels in the family, I think. I don't remember. We're gonna review these, um, these new things that we got. I, I should say what they are. So we got the, uh, the Top Fin PH30 Powerhead. And even though, even though in that one video, which I probably haven't even released yet, we got two of the MF20s, uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna get, we already got in our crazy shopping video, the MF40, which is just so clearly better because it's a bigger number. And so we're actually gonna take these apart, do some cinematic stuff on them for later because we're gonna do a review on these things. And then we're gonna put them in the 40 gallon because internal filters are so much better. So much, clearly. So enjoy this. Guys, it's so easy. All you have to do, see the little hand? It's so easy, just pull. Wow, look at that mustache coming in thick. So all you have to do, guys, is all you, all you have to do, all you have to do, 
All you have to do, guys, is just pull. It's so easy. Like, it's so simple. And then hopefully these don't go flying everywhere. But dang, look at the, look at that. So it's, this is probably what we would have found in the 20s. So let's just put two of these in here. And I just threw mine. Nice. And then it's got a ton of these very porous ceramic pieces. And what do these specifically help with? It's, is it just Service basically... Surface area for beneficial bacteria to live on. So the same as sponge? Sorry? Same as the sponge. But that's of? like lab proven to hold more bacteria. It's lab proven. But you cannot squish them out. So once there is gunk in there, there will always be gunk in here. They also double as a, a nice treat when you're hungry. So, hey guys, we've decided that we're going to install both the power head which you've seen and you will see in a review coming shortly and you can't hear me i'm sorry but we're also going to install our internal filter the big boy so if you guys remember we put pvc tubing around both filters we can't do that anymore because one of the filters has been taken out and we were looping them around the intake tubes uh, so that's not really a problem anymore because these new filters are going to be pushing up out of the water instead of down into the water. So we're going to install both now. We're going to leave the aqua clear running because that's filtered media and it's good to have it while we put in the new stuff. And then eventually it's just going to be the the power head and our big boy. <laughs> I didn't put a, a timer on those muffins. I also didn't put the muffins in. So. <laughs> Oh, this is brown bag. Carbon. Uh, ammonia, I think. <laughs> brown. So, new development. <laughs> is that dripping too? <laughs> new development, there's water everywhere. Uh, the AquaClear filter was... Like, I don't know. Slow, up. Slowly dripping out the back because of stuffed media. Yep. And, and this is the problem with those AquaClear filters, guys. They lean backwards. And other like, unlike the top fin, there's no way that the water can get around the media. It can't go onto the other side. Like you can see on this top fin filter, as I drag the cord all across the floor, <laughs> you can see on this top fin filter, I'm getting awfully close. I know I'm sorry. It's a little cozy in here, but you can see there's a secondary waterfall. So if the water can't get through this media, which is very stuffed at the moment, <laughs> it goes over the secondary waterfall. And because of these tabs on the back, it stays level with the aquarium. So the AquaClear doesn't have that. And uh, I had not noticed, and Zach had known this was a problem with AquaClears. So now we're realizing, guys, that we have water underneath the aquarium, which is just so great. And uh, we're going to figure that out now. So uh, see you in a bit. Oh, oh, guys. You see a moment and you immediately smell it. Oh. <laughs> Airball. <laughs> it took a good smell of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, if, if you've not owned an Aqua Clear before and you're looking into it, uh, when it's not turning on like this, what you do is you take this tube out here. Just just take the in -tube, intake tube out a little bit. And what you do is you stick your finger into the motor. Oh my gosh, even that didn't well, start. Well, it's unplugged. <laughs> That's the only way you can start it. Is it plugged in? Yep. Yeah. Alright, you stick your finger in there. And it just starts spinning, guys. That's all you gotta do. Now, I have lost a few fingers doing this, but <laughs> you guys can see... If I can find a spot, oh, this is the, yeah, the water's kind of brown. So it was definitely coming out of the filter. Oy vey. What would you do without me? I would <laughs> flood my house. <laughs> That's what I would do. Oh, look at all that nice humidity. Hold if on. you guys are looking for a way to save money on heating for the aquarium, or you have labyrinth fish that need to breathe from the surface, a lid is a great option because it keeps the water or the air above the same temperature and withholds that humidity. I have a rimless square and I'm gonna lose almost a gallon a day to evaporation. <laughs> there you go, from the man himself.
Just I'm turning it on right now. <laughs> <laughs> So true. Do it, I dare you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I refuse. Oh my gosh, these suction cups are so strong. Yeah, it just popped off. It's almost sound like exploded your glass. Shh, shh. glass. My glass is cracked and my day is ruined. It is? Oh. But the suction cup is not gonna go back on very easily. Nope. Oh my gosh. They build them so they don't come off, eh? Nope. And they come off. Oh my gosh. So if you guys are having a good time so far, just take a moment and uh, like the video, subscribe, and I, I promise you'll see me struggle much more in the future with different aquarium equipment. <laughs> Imagine when he gets his first canister filter. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's some extreme power. We're engineers. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're aquarists. I guess. <laughs> now, will fish fry be in danger here? No? Well, Pluckos are fine. So if I had Tetra to spawn? Your tetras won't spawn. <laughs> Your water's too hard. Rainbow fish. Rainbow fish. They are used to spawning in high currents. They are a high current fish. Well, there you go, guys. You know what else is a high current fish? Rainbow gobies. Or should we say... <laughs> I don't know the scientific I name. I cannot remember the scientific name. You can say... Dinosaurs. Uh, Dinosaur Bashir. No, oh, no, I gotta remember. It's not. I'm thinking Cynodontus. Uh, Spinosaurus. <laughs> but it's the better name. <laughs> How did I forget? Oh. I guess it's not the better name. It is the better name. It's the better name. I'm sorry, guys. I've forgotten your name. Guys, those are our new filters. We're going to look at the... Siphodon... Gobi... It'll be... It'll be right here. Right, right above my hand. The name of the goby. Rainbow goby. It's not a no. <laughs> <laughs> the the dinosaur goby, as they will now be named, uh, will have uh, a clip at the end of this video. So hopefully I trimmed this down enough because this was twenty minutes of videoing just us messing with the aquarium and cleaning up water and cleaning up water, which we're still well. I'm still gonna be doing once I drop Zach off. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're gonna go to cinematic now, and then we might check back in with me. If not, it's because the video was too long and I didn't want to bore you guys. So, see you next Sunday.
Stifidon, that's what they were called. Stifidon gobies. Ugh, I can't believe I forgot it. But, uh, hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to a future Matt update. Today we were talking about the Stifidon goby and uh, why I think it's awesome and why I think it's not awesome because it definitely leans both ways. And I know what you're thinking, Matt, have you been eating enough? Have you been getting enough sleep? And the answer is yes, recently. Not, not earlier, but I'm getting better, <laughs> you know? This whole self-care thing is, uh, it can be difficult when you move out. For you guys who are gonna go into university uh, coming up, make sure you take care of yourself, okay? Because it's super easy if you're very academic to get lost in studying and, you know, for other people to get lost and hang out with friends and you're not gonna have depending on if you're living with roommates or not, you're not gonna have uh, parents or friends or people making sure that you're doing okay. So do okay. Anyways, if you wanna talk about personal health in the comments, I'm open. But today, we're gonna talk about the Stifodon, which reminds me of like Dimorphodon or Dimetrodon, some kind of dinosaurish things. I don't think either of those were dinosaurs, but you know what I'm talking about. It sounds prehistoric and it fits. It looks super cool, the Stifodon goby. Um, but the first image I caught of it, or like the only image that I caught of it, was uh, this video right here. And it, it greatly exemplifies what you see of this fish in the aquarium. So we'll start with the bad side of the Stifodon goby, and that is, you don't see it. <laughs> you never, you're not gonna see this fish at all. It's worse than coolie loaches, honestly. Um, maybe not as bad as coolie loaches, but it actually hangs out with coolie loaches. So it, it's basically like a combination of uh, autosynclus and coolie loaches. It, it eats algae, you'll see it kind of clunk, cling, what? <laughs> you'll see it clinging to the glass uh, and eating algae. It loves brown diatoms. I'm trying to get it on cucumber just like I had to go through the whole thing of getting the autosynclus on cucumber, which I still haven't done a video on. <laughs> I'm trying to get the stifodon on cucumber and hopefully that works out, but I, anyways, it's like autosynclus and clue loaches combined because it's an algae eater, but it's very reclusive. So if you want a fish that's gonna be out a lot, don't get this fish, <laughs> do not get this fish. It's gonna be hiding a lot, uh, and maybe that's not the case. Maybe I just haven't kept it long enough. It's only been like five days. I can't do time, but it's not been that long, so maybe it will come out a lot more in the future, but as for now, it's very reclusive. Another problem with it, like I said, is it it's very selective with eating. So it's kind of like the autosynclus. I believe most of them are wild caught because it's very difficult to breed them in the hobby. You have to get brackish and then you gotta bring them back into fresh water and then they breed and then the eggs go back into brackish. Uh, similar to salmon, I would imagine, although I think the eggs themselves just go right back into uh, salt water. So another thing that you might not like about this guy depending on you know how you are with small fish is it is a very small fish now this can be a great thing i could definitely put a bunch of them in my 10 gallon but in a 40 gallon they kind of disappear so they have a lot of good color on them as you guys can see with this shot but the color kind of gets lost when everything else is so much bigger and there's just such a big environment that they're in speaking of small this species also has a very short lifespan. Now it's documented at living around two years. I don't know if that's just because it lives in fresh water or that they're made to live in fresh water and maybe they should be in a little bit of brackish as well. I have very hard water so hopefully that helps it out. Um, it seems to be good for a lot of goby species to have harder water so if you can make that arrangement it'll probably work out in your favor. But yeah those are kind of the the bad things about the Stifodon or rainbow goby. On the flip side it's a really cool looking fish if you have the patience to look for it. Uh, it loves a fast flowing environment we're going to talk about how it might be changing the tank for that in just a second but it loves fast flowing water that's why it's the a raven just flew so close to my window, I thought I was gonna get hit right there, guys. Anyways, so, <laughs> so the Stifodon, really cool to look at if you have the patience to look for it. Uh, it's got the kind of the blue tattoos on the face. It looks like this big blue lip and then it kind of, kind of goes down the side. There's a lot of cool colors on this. I believe I have a male and a female, so it is possible to breed them in fresh water. It's been done before. I'm hoping my hard water helps with that, but 
that's just another thing. If you can breed this species, it's gonna be worth it because it's so cool to have and I think you're gonna be able to sell it really quickly. Other than that, uh, there's not a lot more to say about this fish. Uh, it, it's got cool colors, it adds some diversity to the aquarium, it's a challenge to breed if you wanna try and go into that. Uh, it might work in partnership with your brackish setup so you can keep it some of the time with brackish, some of the time with fresh, and you can have fun with that, you know, if you're really into brackish. Uh, but other than that, not a lot else to say. I hope that you guys enjoyed the cinematic though um, Because it's probably cooler to look at than to talk about in other news uh, Starting with the 10 gallon. There's a lot of stuff going on in the 10 gallon that I can't tell you guys about and I really wish I could there's a lot of fish like there's over There's probably around like 30 20 fish in the in the 20 gallon or in the 10 gallon that I just added uh, but I can't tell you guys about it. All I will tell you is that they're shrimp compatible and I did manage to catch one of the cherry shrimp and put it in the 10 gallon. Uh, and he looks really cool in there and he's doing okay and he's getting along with the other species that I also put in recently. And I really regret doing <laughs> the video on that species the way that I did because I wanted it to be kind of um, uh, across one time to another. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you guys progression basically. And it's not worked out in my favor, but I, I still got to go ahead with it. Otherwise, it just kind of comes out weird. Uh, speaking of videos coming out weird, I still haven't done that auto syncless video yet. I still haven't done the assassin snail video yet. What I can tell you guys is that the auto syncless are all eating cucumber, I think. They're all schooling really well. They all look really healthy. The only thing I don't really like about them is since the aquarium is by the window, the light comes through the window and it shines through their head and you kind of see their brain and it's it's not the look that I'm looking for, you know? Uh, and then with the assassin snails, uh, the two in there I have seen again. I probably have a shot right here. Um, they're doing fine. They're really inactive. They're really inactive. I don't know if they need really high temperature. I'll do the research on that uh, probably after I'm done filming this video just to make sure that they're in the right conditions but they are really inactive. They're not really eating snails. Uh, I'm starting to slow, other than the fact that they're just another cool snail with that little, uh, the snorkel that comes out. I, other than that, I'm really kind of regretting getting them because they're just, other than that, they're just another snail and they're not doing their job really all that well and they're not breeding. And if I don't have a male and a female, they won't breed. And also I still have to find the one that's in the 10 gallon still, which I've turned into a cool water aquarium. So hopefully he or she is doing okay. But um, yeah, last update is uh, the fast flowing thing that I'm trying to do. I got the, um, the, the other filter and we got the power head in this video. I'm trying to figure out how to configure them because it, it's hard with this this giant box like I love um, Internal filters, but you're just kind of putting a big box in your aquarium and it's hard to make that look good um, But I'm, I'm working with it. Zach's gonna give me some more plants I think we're gonna do a whole new video probably the auto syncless video or the assassin snail video will be partially us uh, trying to figure out how to make those the filter and the power head look better and probably rescaping the 40 gallon. The, the 40 gallon has looked like this for a very, very long time. And I think that it's definitely time that we change it up a little bit. Uh, not too much, I don't wanna stress the fish out too much, but I think that it needs some height to it on the hardscape and maybe more river stones and maybe bring it all a little bit, uh, excuse me, <laughs> and maybe bring it all a little bit more forward. I think that could look really good. But let me know what you guys think. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. Uh, if you want to see more like this, we're going to be doing tank updates. We're going to be going to look at different people's aquariums. We still got to look at Zach's aquariums. We're going to be doing product reviews. So if you want to see my in-depth thoughts on different types of filters and stuff, stick around for that. And uh, I will see you guys next Sunday.